Okay. So the name of our presentation is Longsiders walking alongside language communities in community-based language and identity development by Daniel Duke, you see my contact, and David Eberhard, and you see his contact. Let's see. Okay, so the parts of this presentation are introduction, talking about the challenges we face in collaboration, and then introducing a community-based uh, approach, both to number two, language development, and then community-based approach to language documentation. And then the idea of key relationships to have better collaboration using the idea of an alongsider. And then just a conclusion. So with introduction, we could talk about challenges to collaboration, whether it be in case of language development, trying to get the communities to have a, let's say a written language and research the language, or whether it be language documentation, whether it be short-term projects or longer term. There's a whole, um, continuum from just consent only with very little cooperation to cooperation to showing community members showing some local agency, let's say adding to the agenda or even showing full local agency. But the ideal for us would be this community members would show full local agency that is informed so that they would be able to fully understand uh, and contribute. So we can talk about two areas that give us challenge and collaborate collaboration. One is communal agency. As we've talked about, we may bring uh, agendas which are perhaps not the agendas of the local community. And then the problem of communal awareness. We're uh, asking people to get involved in language research or language documentation without having the needed awareness, especially of social linguistic issues. So even if we want them to make decisions, they probably need social linguistic training of some sort to make better decisions. So the question we're asking is, what if the agenda of our language research or language development or language documentation, what if our agenda was uh, based on the agenda of the informed community, the agenda that the local people would be proposing and buying into. What if that agenda took the front seat? And we'll go on to Dave. That's a good question. Um, and that is exactly the question we're going to explore in the rest of this talk. Uh, to address that question, SIL has developed a new approach to language development uh, with uh, the informed community in the front seat, so to speak. And we loosely call this Community-Based Language and Identity Development, CBLID. You're going to see that acronym throughout the talk. And it, it means building capacity and awareness within local communities to empower them to make informed decisions about the future of their own language and identity situation. Um, the, this approach has uh, resulted in several resources that uh, have been developed uh, recently, and they've been used in over 100 communities worldwide. The first resource is a step-by-step -step manual on language de development known as the Guide for Planning the Future of Our Language. It's available in book form at the link that you see there. And the second resource is uh, a consultative experience or consultative relationship, if you will, in language development known as the language and identity journey. Uh, this is the newest of the two resources and it, it puts communities in contact with a trained specialist in CBLID who can walk with them in their language and identity journey. Uh, this will be accessible via a website that is still under development. Uh, both of these approaches uh, are 
are based on a theoretical model known as the Sustainable Use Model by Lewis and Simons, uh, 2016. There's a link to that book there. Uh, and this particular model of, uh, of community uh, of, of development, language development, it, it, the main insight is that it differentiates between sustainable levels of language use and unsustainable levels of language use and helping those practitioners of language development to, to be able to choose levels of, of language use that are sustainable as their goals of development. Um, the process by which uh, CBLID uh, does this is it engages interested community leaders, walking them through the four phases of this journey. There's a communal awareness phase where the leaders become aware of their language situation. There's a communal assessment phase where the uh, community leaders learn how to assess their own language using social linguistic principles, the vitality of their language. There's a communal planning phase where the communal community leaders begin their planning, uh, to begin to plan for the future of their language ecology, language situation. And then there's a communal implementation phase where they put that plan into action. Uh, this uh, approach is delivered through a series of three workshops. The workshops will include community leaders and stakeholders. Uh, and then besides the three workshops, there will also be a long-term relationship with a trained specialist, someone who's trained in community-based language and identity development to come alongside them. And that's, this is a person that we are, we are calling the alongsider. So we, you will hear that through the rest of this talk as well. Um, and that is, uh, this relationship is part of the process. The methodology uh, within the workshops, it uh, uses a lot, it, it uh, leans a lot on participatory activities, uh, activities that can help community leaders engage uh, with topics, uh, the social linguistic topics and to visualize their language situation, gaining the needed awareness to be able to make the decisions uh, for their community. And here's some examples I believe we have of those uh, uh, activities. The example one is uh, participatory activity on language ecology being done by the Bukan language community of Malaysia. Uh, an example two is a picture of uh, the results of a participatory activity mapping. It's a domains of use map that was produced by the Kalabit community in Malaysia. And uh, the third one is uh, example three is uh, the mountain metaphor. Uh, it's a visual that we use to help communities to visualize language vitality, where languages are on the language mountain as far as the strength or weakness of their language vitality. Okay, and we also wanna talk about CBLID as applied to specifically language documentation. Now, although community-based language and identity development as a approach was developed uh, in the context of SIL for language development, which is to put languages, let's say, into writing and put literature into these languages and educational materials. We are also moving toward developing materials as part of the workshops to uh, encourage communities to do language documentation and uh, encourage them on how they could do language documentation. Now, in the meanwhile, I just wanted to talk about two uh, ideas, which I think we could all apply to directly to our work in language research, whatever the contact, context. That would be community-based approach to language research and using participatory methods. So I'm not gonna give all the detail on the slide. You can pause uh, the, the slide in the next one. Um, but these are just ideas of how a community-based approach could help in the different phases of our work, which is to say, imagine if you could get more people from the community involved and have them uh, more aware so that they could collaborate in a better way, whether it be uh, having that awareness for the early phases, even the planning, and even the collection of uh, information before a project, or also during the phase when the work is being done. If the community were more engaged, I think we would have better results and, and 
better um, choices, for example, of recordings that could be useful later on. And then let's say after the language documentation project is come to the end of its uh, number of years or number of months, we would love the community to continue working. And we also want to talk about the utility of participatory methods. It's just very similar is to think if you could use methods which would be more participatory, which would help people to, even if they don't have a great background in research, to help people engage, more, more people to engage in a better way. And so there are uh, more and more um, methods being developed where a lot of people use rapid word collection methods. Um, we also, as part of the workshops already in place, have participatory workshops for awareness, building, assessment, planning, and then for mapping out geography, dialects, language use information, as we saw, all these things could uh, be useful in language documentation. And once again, uh, if people are used to doing these kind of participatory methods, if there was an alongsider who could keep on uh, visiting them even after language documentation uh, project had finished, this could be a real benefit to them. And we'll go to Dave. Okay, the key, the key uh, point I think that we're trying to uh, communicate here in this uh, presentation is that the secret sauce of CBLID, the main component are its relationships. It invests in strong relationships. And uh, the two relationships particularly that are key to promoting communal agency and, and for this uh, approach to work are between first between local leaders and regional CBLID specialists or alongsiders as we call them. And the second one between the regional alongsiders and the external social linguistic researchers. Uh, these uh, uh, relationships, uh, in the next slide, I think we're gonna go to a, uh, uh, oh yeah, the purpose of these relationships. They, each one is unique. So at the local level, um, between the alongsiders and the local language community. The purpose of that relationship is to promote communal agency and awareness of the language situation among the local language leaders. Uh, at the regional level, uh, that relationship between the social linguistic researcher and uh, the uh, regional organizations and, their, and the member of that organization who is typically the alongsider, uh, that relationship is about building capacity among these regional uh, alongsiders in, in social linguistic principles so that they can then walk through the, walk with the community. Um, so this, the, the approach of the long, using the alongsider is, is, requires a particular posture from the alongsider. And there's four key components here. Um, I'm gonna kind of read through them quickly, but the main thing is that uh, the, the, the first one, the more crucial one, is that there needs to be a neutral posture. Alongsiders are not those who lead the process, nor do their agencies lead the process. It requires humility. It requires those who want to come alongside and serve. And by not bringing their own agendas, that's how community agency is promoted. Uh, it also requires an informed posture. They are trained. And they're trained also how to del deliver that information about social linguistic principles to the community leaders so that they will be informed. Uh, it also is a long-term posture where they're committed to this long-term relationship with the community, uh, which is something that uh, international experts uh, typically are not able to do. Uh, so this allows it to be sustainable. Uh, it's also a local posture where the alongsiders are people from the local or regional area and understand the culture and able to provide a more contextualized, localized perspective. Uh, so as some examples of alongsiders, we have been able to interview two leaders of two regional organizations who have partnered with the CBLID movement and who are walking alongside numerous communities in their region of the world. 
in the in the in the task of language documentation. The first one is uh, I'm going to show you a clip of an interview I did with Solomon Sukukum, the Secretary General of Connecta in Nigeria. Connecta is the conference of autochthonous ethnic uh, communities and associations in Nigeria, and he's talking here about the uh, importance of community agency. Solomon. Uh, so we we recognize that uh, each community, each language is owned by a community, and each community is actually at the center of whatever happens to the language. It's the decision of the community that will make a language vital or uh, or die. If whatever will happen to the language is actually the decision of the community. So we right. looking for ways. In fact, when we had the first strategic conference, it was there that the guide was presented by one of the uh, participants from SIL, and already we were discussing on how do we get each language community to plan uh, the future of their languages, what to do, and how to develop it. Uh, okay, and in this next uh, interview, uh, this is where I'm interviewing Mohammed Zaman Sagar, who is the language consultant with FLI in Pakistan, Forum for Language Initiatives. And this, in this uh, particular clip, uh, Mohammed is talking about uh, workshops, CBLID workshops in Pakistan and the content in those workshops. Mohammed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 10 language communities, yeah. Okay. And what could you tell us about the, some of the topics that are covered in, uh, in some of these uh, workshops, these community based language development workshops? Yeah, like a few of them, for example, like uh, uh, like uh, one of them is like identify what language we use and who uses them, like uh, mm -hmm. this uh, language repertoire in the community. And then also the second is like bodies of knowledge, like mm -hmm. what bodies of knowledge are uh, here are there and how this uh, bodies of knowledge uh, we should pass on to the next uh, uh, generation. Yeah. And then uh, how these people are using their language now. And the other is like ident identifying that uh, uh, whether our language has been su sufficiently documented or not. Like uh, this, this is also like the, the language use thing. And the fourth one is like, uh, uh, the fifth one is actually the planning. So the community is planning itself. Right. So for the future of like what, what, uh, uh, where we are weak and where what kind of things we want to uh, like strengthen and then they, they are planning themselves and then they are implementing their plans. Okay. Next slide. All right. And in the last, this last clip is where Zaman is uh, sharing the results of CBLID among one particular community, the Sheena people. Of Pakistan. We can see a lot of change in the community's behavior. And mm -hmm. yesterday I was talking to one of my uh, co-facilitators co and he said that there are more than 10 WhatsApp groups uh, where they are uh, like actually uh, discussing all these language issues and people have started to speak language with their children. And the wow. same like uh, another uh, uh, community facilitator who took uh, part in that uh, workshop from that speech community. So he actually started uh, uh, debates for language development in in his university because he was a university. Uh, uh, we can see a lot of change. All right, that brings us to our conclusion. We are envisioning community-based language identity development as a means by which we can turn a corner in the documentation, revitalization, and development communities as a whole, and also within our own organization, SIL in particular, such that community agency and awareness is not in the back seat. Instead, community-based language and identity development becomes the norm where linguists can train and walk alongside regional partners who in turn walk alongside communities to empower them with the awareness and agency needed to make decisions they feel are most appropriate for the future of their own language ecologies. Here are the references and then here are our
contact information, please feel free to contact us if you interest in any of these materials or if you have